Hello students, welcome to the course on Hydrology EVE 301 offered to civil engineering students at College of Science and Technology. I am Kirtan Adhikari, faculty at CST. See you in the course. Today we will begin with new unit that is abstraction from precipitation. In a layman's term, abstraction means losses. So losses from precipitation is defined as the quantity which does not yield for hydropower generation, irrigation, domestic water supply, navigation and other uses. Mathematically, precipitation minus surface runoff is equal to total losses and the units are in volume, meter cube or kilometer uh, cube. Mostly we use meter cube for volume. So total losses can be further broken down into evaporation, evapotranspiration, interception, depression, and infiltration. And here there are new terms that is interception and depression. During the start of a rainfall event, some volume of rain is caught on the vegetation and wets the ground. Eventually, it will evaporate into the atmosphere and does not contribute to runoff. This volume of rain is known as interception losses. Whereas, some portion of rainfall is used up to fill the depression in the catchments. Eventually, it will infiltrate or evaporate. Thus, it does not contribute to runoff. And this losses is known as depression losses. Further. Infiltration is the process by which water gets into the ground. In this chapter, we shall quantify or measure various losses such as evaporation, evapotranspiration, initial losses and infiltration losses. Depression and interception losses are sometimes referred as initial losses. Because it happens during the initial phase of precipitation. To begin with, let's start with evaporation. As we know, evaporation is a process by which liquid changes into gaseous forms. The importance of evaporation in engineering is for design consideration. As considerable amount of water is lost from large water reservoirs. Large scale water resource planning and water supply studies, including irrigation projects, must consider evaporation losses. Now, coming to the physics of evaporation, according to Dalton's law, evaporation is directly proportional to the difference of saturation vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure of the air. And we, if we convert the Proportionally, proportionality sign to equal to then we supply with the proportionality constant so the Dalton's law is equal to evaporation is equal to C which is a constant times the difference in saturation vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure. As portrayed in the figure just above the liquid lies a saturation layer of the vapor of the same liquid and it exerts pressure on the liquid. When the liquid molecule possesses sufficient kinetic energy, it escapes into the atmosphere by the process of evaporation. By supplying energy in the form of heat or by reducing vapor pressure above the liquid surface, the molecule can easily escape into the atmosphere. Evaporation will continue till the saturation vapor pressure equals the actual vapor pressure. If the saturation vapor pressure is less than actual vapor pressure, then the condensation will take place. With this, let's understand the factors that affects the evaporation. As we have already studied, it is the vapor pressure. It is directly proportional to the vapor pressure gradient or the difference in the saturation vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure. The next factor is the air temperature. 
It is said that evaporation increases with the increase in air temperature, but a high correlation does not exist. Also with the wind speed, it is said increase in wind speed increases the evaporation till a critical value beyond which further increase of wind speed does not influence the evaporation. Atmospheric pressure evaporation is set to decrease with the increase in atmospheric pressure. Soluble salts. It is said that evaporation decreases about 1% for every 1% increase in salinity. That's why seawater evaporates less than the fresh water because it contains salt. Depth of water bodies also includes evaporation. Shallow water bodies tends to heat rapidly. Thus, evaporation is more in shallow water compared to a deep water. With this, let's go to the field and do some real measurements. The me measurement is done through the equipment known as evaporimeters, and there are different types of evaporimeters. In our session, we will discuss about class A evaporation pan and Colorado sunken pan. So let's head to the field and do some calculations, some measurements. Along with this, we also need to measure various other hydro meteorological phenomenon which is required for further calculations. Okay guys, let's go to the field now. This is class A evaporation plan and we are going to measure how much evaporation was there since yesterday. For this, I need a measuring cylinder which I have filled it to one liter level so that yesterday if there was some evaporation, I, I need to add the water. So again, tomorrow when I come, I know how much water has evaporated. And then also I need a thermometer to record the uh, water temperature in this pan. So here, what I do is I dip the thermometer in the water to record the water temperature. So the water temperature is 14. is exactly 14 degrees centigrade. Now to know the evaporation, first let me put this thermometer so that I don't break it. Okay. So you can see this there's a small metal here and the metal tip is protruding outside water surface water surface which means yesterday i have made the water level exactly on the tip so yesterday there was evaporation and the water surface has gone down and the, uh, this metal has is is protruding outside the water surface so what how much evaporation to measure to to know the quantity what i do is i add water such that the water surface touches exactly the tip of this metal so i'm going to add this water i need to be careful here yes exactly now you can see I have made the water level such that it is exactly touching the tip of this metal. So, how much water did I add? Now here, this is 1 liter minus this much. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7.9. So 7.9, 0 0.79, that is the amount quantity of water that are added which means that much water has evaporated from this pan since yesterday exactly at this time because every day I take reading exactly on this time today is 8 November and right now the time is about 8 30 so I do this reading every day so yesterday at 8 30 I did today at 8 30 the evaporation is about 0 0.79 liters this is a Colorado sunken pan and here it gives the quantity of evaporation. How much evaporation was there since yesterday I can do the measurement here. So you can see here similar to class A evaporation pan there is a small metal and its tip is protruding outside water surface 
water surface here which means yesterday I have made the water surface exactly touching at that tip so which means there was evaporation in this 24 hours so the water surface has gone down so what I do is to know the how much you know how much water has evaporated what I do is I will add some water here I have a measuring cylinder yes I have a measuring cylinder I need to add this water here and maintain the water surface exactly at this point and I take the reading here so which which means I can exactly tell how much water has evaporated okay before doing this I also need to note the water temperature okay so I have a thermometer here so I will dip this thermometer inside the water and I need to take the reading I keep it for some time just 30 to 40 seconds and when I take the reading I should maintain the level here the red mark it should be outside water to make the precise reading so here the water temperature is 15 16 it is more than 16 and less than 17 so I will consider this as 17 degrees centigrade so let me keep this thermometer okay okay let it be here so I will now add water Okay, so it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.77 0 .7 liter of water has evaporated from this bath. Since this is a November month, I can expect very less evaporation. If it was during a dry and uh, it was for example, if it, if it was in April, evaporation would be very much, I mean, it would be high. So it's a winter and the evaporation is very less. So that's it. There are three instruments here. One is dry bulb thermometer. One is wet bulb thermometer. Okay. And the third instrument gives us the minimum temperature and maximum temperature. As you can see, I will be taking this reading for the minimum temperature. You can see this. Come forward. Just come forward. And you can see there is a blue marking here. You can observe this blue marking here. There's a blue marking here. So this is a minimum scale. You can see this is a minimum scale. There's a blue marking here. When this mercury drops, I mean it will it will it will I mean the mercury and uh, there's a mercury here and there's a blue marking right so as the mercury moves up and down so this mercury will push this so we can we then we can measure the minimum temperature so here the minimum temperature is this is 15 14 the minimum temperature is 15 you can this long this line is 15 and this is 14 so the minimum temperature yesterday was 14 degrees centigrade and maximum temperature was similar to this you can observe there's a blue line here and the min uh, maximum temperature was this 20 it's 20 here it's 15 16 it's 19 since 19 it's it's way above a little bit slightly above 19 slightly below 20 so i would take it as 20 degrees centigrade so let me do this reading after you have taken the reading i need to calibrate this instrument to the process to calibrate this instrument is there's a magnet here okay first let me take the reading 
that I don't forget it. So the maximum is maximum temperature is 19 and minimum is 30. It's 13 degrees centigrade. So I've taken the reading, now I need to do the calibration. I have a magnet here, so what I do is, I need to make this blue line exactly at on the mercury, so that when there is a fluctuation in temperature, the mercury moves and it will push this blue line. So here, you can see this, you can see this, how this blue line moves. There's a magnet here. Ah, exactly. Now the next one. Okay, now we have done the calibration. So let me explain this. Now when there is the, when there is rise in temperature, obviously there is rise this is at right now the time is 8:30. As day progresses, the temperature will rise. Mercury will push this. As it push up, it will go to the maximum point, and we did when like like previous. Uh, then we do the reading, and when the, there is a drop in tem temperature, mercury drops. But this will not come down. A person, a human is required. A magnet is requ required, in fact, to pull this down. So thus we do the reading, and the case is similar in case of uh, minimum thermometer. So here we have an instrument to measure relative humidity. What I do here is remove this covering and you can see the arrangement. You can see an arrangement here. There's a small arm here with an ink and there's a drum which rotates. So I need I mean as the time progresses it will measure the relative humidity and it will be it will mark on the chart. So to remove this chart, what I do is I gently remove this, I mean I turn this and I make this arm move forward, remove the clip, take out the chart and see this is the variation of relative humidity. So we can see the, how uh, there was a, there is a variation of relative humidity since yesterday. And let me fix this chart. It has to be tight. Flip it. Okay. So the time right now is about eight thirty. So I need to add some ink on the tip. Okay. Now the time is eight thirty. So here. So we are good to go now.